What's going on guys, the CTA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at my new favorite retro handheld console. Now, if you watch my channel, you know I do a lot of reviews on these Chinese handheld consoles and a lot of them come out pretty good, but most of them are very underpowered. And that's totally fine for the price on some of these things, but the RG350 is going for around $90, which in my opinion is still a little overpriced here. We have some $35 units, some $40, $50, $60, and even that $90. But I recently came across a new handheld console and it's powered by one of my favorite things in the whole world, a Raspberry Pi. It's actually powered by the Raspberry Pi CM3 Lite and I'm not sure if we can upgrade to the newer CM3 but either way it works great like it is and it's one of the best if not the best retro handheld consoles that I've ever messed around with. Now I'm not talking about Android phones with controllers attached because those will definitely beat this in performance but for a purpose built emulation console this thing is amazing. Now the price may turn away a few people, I've seen these going for around $170 to $250 online. This is known as the Retro CM3 and it was designed by Dr. Shu. The case on this is not 3D printed, this is an injection molded case. This thing was put together very professionally. There's no hot glue, there's no floating around wires in here, and by the end of the video we're going to do a quick tear down on it just so I can show you how this thing's put together because it's very professional how they did this. Now one thing that everybody's going to be complaining about is the inclusion of only two triggers. Now I personally don't mind having it like this because a lot of the older retro games that I play only require two triggers or no triggers at all. But this does mean that some of the later PS1 games that required four trigger buttons, which really there isn't that many, won't work well on this device. But they will run at full speed. And as specs go, it's a lot higher than the other Chinese handheld consoles that have been hitting the market lately. Like I mentioned, it's running the Raspberry Pi CM3 Lite. For the CPU, we have that quad-core Cortex-A53 chip. This is a BCM2837 at 1.2 GHz, and this can be overclocked. There is a heatsink on the CPU inside of this unit. 1 GB of RAM, a 3.5-inch 480 by 320 IPS display, and it looks great. 3700 milliamp hour battery. They claim 10 to 6 hours of battery life, and in their claims at 50 percent brightness playing GBA games you can get six hours of gameplay out of this thing. A single built-in one watt speaker plus we have that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Micro USB TV out because there's no HDMI on here and I actually have no way to test it. I just ordered the micro USB to HDMI and I'm going to see if that works when I get my package in. Built-in Wi-Fi module and you can use up to a 256 gigabyte micro SD card. It supports Botocera, Laka, RetroPie and so on and so on. After all, it's got a Raspberry Pi inside of here. So you can go full boat on customization with the operating system here. So one of the best things about getting a Raspberry Pi is the customization. I got a couple themes installed here. I got a bunch of different emulators going. And before you even buy, you really know what you're getting because there's thousands and thousands of videos online showing off the performance of these different systems. But in this video, I do want to go over a few. We're going to go through some PlayStation, some N64, some TurboGrafx-16, some MAME, and a few others. And then we'll get right down to it because I want to take this thing apart and just take a look at how it's put together. And by the way, the screen is 60 hertz. There's absolutely no tearing at all. And if you see any kind of flickering going on or any kind of banding, it's because my camera isn't matching the 60 hertz on the screen. I actually ran into an issue where the camera I normally use for this kind of filming would not work correctly because there was just so much banding. It just has to do with the 60 hertz screen and filming at 60 FPS. You won't see any flickering or banding with your naked eye. So first up, we have some PS1. This is Tekken 3. Obviously, the Raspberry Pi 3 can run PS1 very well, so we'll just move over to a little bit of N64. Now, while you won't be able to play every single N64 game at full speed, there are a lot that work pretty well on the Pi 3. Like F-Zero, as you see here, Mario Kart, Mario 64, there's a lot of lower-end N64 games that run fine on this unit. But don't expect to run games like Rogue Squadron, Conker's Bad Fur Day, or even GoldenEye 007 at full speed. Next up, we have some TurboGrafx CD, otherwise known as PC Engine CD, in other parts of the world. We also have full speed emulation with the regular old Turbo Graphics and PC Engine. Sega CD or Mega CD runs great on this little unit. I'm sure there's a few of these games that might struggle just because the games themselves weren't that optimized, but overall you should have a pretty decent experience. Hey, 
A little bit of Neo Geo with Metal Slug 4. It's always run really well on the Raspberry Pi. Even the Raspberry Pi 2 could handle it, and this has the same specs as the Raspberry Pi 3, so we have no issue here. Super Nintendo with the special chip games like the Super FX or the Super FX2 will run at full speed here. This is Star Fox. I also tested out Yoshi's Island. Game Boy Advance. No problem at all. This is Sonic Advance 3, one of the faster paced games, and that's one of the reasons I always test it. We're getting 60 FPS here, and I know it's hard to see, but I do have the FPS counter in the lower left hand corner. When it comes to MAME with the 2D games, this thing will power right through them. Now, going to, let's say, Killer Instinct just isn't going to be doable on something like this. But overall, the great 2D games will run at full speed. CPS1, CPS2, and CPS3 games will also run great with FBA Alpha. So overall, this system's been a treat to use. I love the D-pad on here, the analog stick is a big plus, the buttons feel fine, battery life is great, and I know it's not coming across as it should in the video, but this screen looks absolutely amazing. 3.5 inch IPS, it's not the highest resolution, but it's perfect for these retro games. In the end, I personally think that this is the best emulation handheld that I've ever tested out on the channel. Now it's purpose made for emulation. I'm not talking about Android phones, the 3DS or the PS Vita, but for a tailor made emulation console, this thing rocks. So like I mentioned, I did want to take this thing apart real quick and just check out that CM3 unit, see if it is upgradable. If so, I do have the newer model laying around somewhere, and it definitely looks like it can be upgraded. It's right in the so dim slot, so I'll try to find the other one and see if it works in here, and if so, I'll make another video. I mean, we'll get better performance out of some of these emulators, but we still won't be able to run all PSP or N64 games at full speed. So it does have the Wi-Fi chip integrated into the board itself, and by the way, the analog stick used in here I believe is from the PS Vita or either the GPD handheld. I have our SD card slot over here, and it looks like this battery is actually a 3500 milliamp hour battery, which won't make much of a difference. I believe I said 37, but 35 is right there with it. This is actually a very nice setup. I wish they sold these boards individually because you could just 3D print your own case and build your own, but I don't think they're being sold anywhere except for with the kit itself. So this is the power behind the handheld, the Raspberry Pi CM3 Lite module. Quad core 1.2 gigahertz with that one gigabyte of RAM. And as you can see, they did add a nice little heat sink here to keep it cool. If I'm able to get the new CM3 module to boot, I will make another video. The CM3 module is basically a Raspberry Pi 3 without any built-in Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, HDMI out, or USB ports. So all in all, the heart of this handheld is a Raspberry Pi 3. And the whole package is put together really nicely. In the end, it's a really nice handheld, but it's definitely carrying a premium price tag. Now, there are a few things I would like to see changed in maybe the second revision, possibly a four inch screen, or even change the screen to a four by three aspect ratio. I would also love to see some extra triggers and maybe another speaker, but other than that, this thing's really got it going on. This is a nice little handheld, but like I mentioned, it does carry a pretty hefty price. I've seen them going anywhere from $170 to $230 online. But that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I'm going to see if I can put that new Compute Module 3 Plus in here. It's basically a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, but I think it does require a little more power, and I'm not sure if this board will handle it. I really don't want to burn it up, but I definitely want to test it. If you want to see anything else running on the Retro CM3, or if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.